The Legend of the Gundis The dingoes used to camp in a certain district, in caves. In one particular cave there lived a male with his mate, and as time passed they had a puppy, a beautiful chubby little boy. While he was tiny his father would hunt alone and bring the food home for mother and child. Because he was the only one they had, he was spoilt and became lazy. He refused to hunt with his parents, even when he became big and strong enough to walk great distances. One morning, when he awakened, feeling hungry, he wasn't worried because he could not find any food. He simply went to the next cave where he was fed. After a while, he made a practice of going from camp to camp, and everyone would feed him. As he grew, the rest of the tribe soon became fed up with him and wanted to know why this strong young man did not hunt with his parents. Their resentment was very strong. Everyone was planning what they were going to do to him the next time he came begging. When the old men from the Bora heard the discontentment among the people, they spoke up saying, Yes, you can stop him from always asking for food, but you are not allowed to hurt him. The law will not let you harm him. His parents went on a visit to relatives in the next tribe and the old man called a secret meeting to deal with him. We will move away and at the same time teach him to hunt for himself, they said. We will need four singers. We are all aware that he has never worked and that he is the best dancer in the tribe. No one can corroborate as well as he. So we will work at it like this. Someone is to go and tell him that we recognise him for the artist that he is and invite him to come around and dance for us tonight. It will be a formal affair with paint and feathers which will take about an hour to apply. Six of you will be responsible for organising the people into groups. Old people in one group, mothers with young children in another and so on. Four of you will set the light fires in and around the camp at a given signal. These fires are to be kept going all night, so this chore must be fall the strongest of you. The clamp of a boomerang, as soon as the first thing starts, will be the signal for lighting the fires. Remember that the old people must leave while he is being painted, then the mother with children until all are gone. He won't be able to see beyond the fires into the darkness, so they will be unobserved. Three of you are to see that everyone leaves from a different direction. The old people are to travel in the right direction, the second group to leave by the opposite side and turn in a wide circle about two miles out. The next group is to keep walking in wider and wider circles around the camp. This will be done with the next four groups with each leaving from a different spot and going to the opposite direction to each other. Never forget that the tracks must confuse him. To do this, they must cross each other at several points. Everything went according to plan. The young man, proud the honour bestowed upon him, danced with delight, completely unaware of his diminishing audience. The night started to fade away, and when the old men saw the morning star in a certain position, they signalled to the fourth singer to sing the last song. Are you tired? They asked. By this time the dance was exhausted, so he merely nodded. They led him to a bed that had been specially prepared for him, helped him down, told him to have a good sleep, and praised him for his dancing. Then they lit fires round him at a safe distance. As soon as he was asleep, they quickly left the camp. 
It was 3 p.m. when the young man became conscious of a deathly stillness. How thoughtful of everyone to be so quiet while I slept, he thought. He lay without moving for some time. Then he began to worry. He called and received no answer. It was then that he felt panic. He leapt up and saw everyone had gone. He ran from cave to cave but found no one. His first thought was to track them, so he set off. At the end of an hour he was back where he started. I'm hungry, he thought. It was then that he first saw the stone axe. Beer. Boomerang. Everything else he needed to hunt with. They were neatly laid down at the head of his bed. He picked up all the weapons and examined them. Then he selected what he thought he would need and set off to hunt for his tea. I'll never be able to feed myself, he wailed, and he tried to remember all the things he had heard the hunters talk of. He soon speared a wallaby, and on his way back he killed several small things and was really loaded down when he went back to camp. He moved camp every day and always had plenty to eat. He became really independent and a great hunter. He killed things without reason and soon became feared. I don't need anyone, he said to himself. If anyone comes near, I'll steal quietly away. I'll never be friends with anyone again. He is still the same today. The story was told to the young men as a warning. They were told they must hunt and work with each other and help their parents always. Never be like the dingo, said the old ones. Because he's a thief and a killer.